These tables look like they're just floating in the air, but they're actually a clever demonstration of the principle of tensegrity. This originated in the 1950s and is still used in the design of modern buildings and structures. The world's largest tensegrity structure is currently the Kurilpa Bridge in Brisbane, Australia. When you first look at it, it appears that the top surface has been supported by the three outside pieces of fishing line. But taking a closer look, you'll see that the line doing all of the work is actually the one in the centre. The piece of fishing line in the centre of the structure is in tension and is supporting the load of the surface of the table and whatever is placed on top of it. The three pieces of line on the outside are simply holding the top surface in place so that it remains directly overhead the centre line and doesn't fall over. If any of these four lines are cut, the table will collapse under its own weight. To better understand these tables and how they work, let's try building our own. I designed the two basic components in Inkscape to be laser cut from 3mm MDF. You could also cut them from plywood or acrylic. I've added a few engraving marks as guides for the holes to be drilled for the fishing line as well. I designed two versions of the table. The flat sections are the same. I've just adjusted the height for the vertical section to accommodate the magnets in the center. The magnets add an interesting dynamic to the table as there's now effectively no physical component holding up the table. It's purely supported by the invisible magnetic force between the two magnets. You can find links to the cutting files and parts list in the video description. Now that the components are cut out, we need to drill the holes through them for the fishing line or thread. I drilled these using a 1mm drill bit on the engraved markings. I then glued the vertical pieces in place using a PVA wood glue and waited for the glue to dry. Once that's done, you can add your fishing line or thread. Fishing line's a bit easier to use because it doesn't fray and it's a bit more rigid, so it's easier to thread through the holes. Cut four lengths a lot longer than you need. You can then trim them once you're done. I glued one end of each line into the bottom side of the table first. You can either tie a knot in the end of the lines or simply glue them into place with some super glue. I found it easier to position them accurately and then glue them in place rather than trying to tie a knot in the correct place. I then glued the tension line in the middle, leaving around a five or six centimeter gap between the two center pieces. I then fed the three outer lines through their holes. The last step takes a bit of patience to get right. You need to glue the three outer lines in place so that there's a little bit of tension on the center line, but also keep the top and bottom as close to parallel as possible. So all three of the outside lines need to be the same length. It helps to use a ruler to get this part right. Also, use a small amount of glue until you're sure that they're correct so that you can undo a joint if you need to. Once you're happy with your table, trim the excess fishing line and make sure that the glue joints are secure and dried. If you're using magnets, glue the outside three lines into place at the correct and even length and then add the magnets to the middle afterwards with opposite poles facing each other.
The magnetic table can't really hold much weight, but you could get more by positioning the magnets closer together. There's a bit of a trade-off here though, because if they're too close together then you can't see the gap between them well, and then it just looks like the magnets are rigidly holding up the table. I tested the fishing line table to see if it could hold up my phone. It held up around 200 grams, but the outside lines did start flexing, so it probably couldn't take too much more than this. The tables are surprisingly rigid, you can even pick them up and hold them sideways. The magnetic one will also hold itself up sideways, but it collapses if you put too much weight on it. You can just pull the magnets back up towards each other to reset the table. Enjoy making your own 10 Segrity tables, and let me know how it goes in the comment section. Thanks for watching, remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.